I know you've heard of GitHub Actions, and I know you've seen these green checks behind me on a pull request or on the GitHub Actions tab, but you know what you can do with them. You can do so many things. If anything happens, then you can perform an action, and you could customize it with YAML and actually run commands from your project. So in this video, we're actually going to do a Hello World project and a Hello World GitHub Action. So therefore, you've got a basic understanding of what GitHub Actions does, and then you can take that knowledge and go further and run your commands and run custom actions and add other actions. It's just so much fun. There is so much that you can do that a lot of pull requests now might have five to 10 of these green, could be red, could be orange ticks, but it keeps the project efficient and gives the user feedback really quickly. But before we get started, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below if you haven't already, then you get notified after my post a video and go live. So what we're going to do is create a new repo. So let's just hit plus and go new repository. And we're going to call it GitHub Action Hello World. And then we'll just say YouTube video for the description. I'm going to make it private so my followers don't get notified that it's going on. But I make most projects, if not all projects, public. I'm going to hit create repository, keep it really, really simple. And you're going to recognize this page. I can now clone it, but I'm going to do everything in the browser to show you how straightforward it is. So we're going to create a new file and we're going to use JavaScript in as an example, but you could do anything you want. So for example, let's do index.js and let's do a console log. You guessed it. Hello world. There we go. And I'm going to commit this straight to the main branch. I'm not going to do a commit message. I've got loads of videos on how to write good commit messages. But for this, I really want to show you the GitHub action. I want to make it fast and really quick and always have a readme as well. But for this repo, you know, you get the idea. So the next thing we're going to do is do a GitHub action. Wow. You must be thinking, well, this is quite hard and scary. Well, actually, you just do exactly what we just did. If I create a new file, and we're going to put it in a specific folder. So it needs to go in the .github folder and then in the workflows folder. And then the name of the file can be anything that you want. So in this case, let's just call it build YAML. And you could use YAML with, with an A in it or just YML is fine. And then the anatomy of a GitHub action is, well, it starts with a name first. No surprises there. And we're just going to get call it build. And that's what we'll see on the GitHub actions page. And then underneath, we want to have the uh, triggers. So what's going to trigger this to run? It could be a push. It could be a pull request. It could be a manual trigger. It could be a comment on an issue. There are so many triggers. Anything on GitHub basically can trigger this. And then we can also have some filters and some checks later. So for now, let's keep it really, really simple. And we're going to say on and we'll say on push. So if we do a push, it's going to trigger this. And then the next thing we want to do is have a list of jobs. Like what jobs are we going to run when this is triggered? So let's just say jobs. And the next part is the name of this job. So here we can call it anything we want. I can call it step one. I could call it build. I'm just going to call it build now. And then what container are we going to run this on? So I run most of mine on Ubuntu, but you can run it on a whole list of things from I think from Windows to Apple to Mac, let's have a look. It says down here, yes, you can run it actual matrix. So you can say run it on three different types of VM, Linux, Macs, and Windows. So you could run it on different environments as well if you really wanted to. And then in this job, we can have steps. So you can have multiple steps. It might be installed dependencies, then run the build and so forth. So then in the steps section, we're going to say uses and the first thing we want to do is check out the code so we can use in a built in github action where we say check out and we're going to use version three if you're using version two it's fine but it's time to upgrade to version three and you can actually use branches in here as well so if you're using any pre-built actions and you want a specific branch then you could also do that as well and then we're going to check out the code and the next thing we want to do is we want to set up that it's a node environment so we're going to say set up node and for this instance, it's going to be version three as well. But the great thing is with this action that we're using within our action, we can actually specify some variables. So we're going to say we want to run it with node version and we can specify the version we want here. I'm going to choose version 16, but you could also run it on a matrix again, not only with different operating systems, say Linux, Mac and Windows, but also within that still different versions of your environment. In this case, we could run it on node 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, for example, as well. And then the next thing we want to do is run the command to run our code. You might have a npm ci step or npm install step, but in this case, we're just going to run 
node and we're going to call it index.js and that's all we're going to do. And that's it. So you can see you might repeat the steps within the job and then you also might have another job as well. So when this job completes, run the next job and you can separate it, separate the logs and separate all that information and you might have different setups as well. So let's just commit that and see how that goes. Again, I'm not going to do a proper commit. Do not copy how I do these commits. I have videos on how to do this properly. But let's commit it straight to main. And now it's going to be running. And the way we can check that is we can go to the actions tab. Or also you can see the commit will have an orange here. You could click straight on that too. So there's a couple of ways you can get to it. If it was a pull request, you'd have at the bottom of the pull request it running as well. So we're on all workflows by default. But if you had multiple different types of workflows, for example, build, test, deploy, you could filter down to the one you wanted. And this is the commit message we said, create build.yaml. And it's running it and it's queued to run it. And we could click on it to go inside. It's actually just finished already. I mean, it's going to be very, very quick. And then if you had different jobs you'd have another job after this one so you might have test and deploy and so forth but we can click on it and go see the logs and these are the different steps that we put within our yaml file but if you recognize this one run node index.js and what is it going to say here well in our javascript file we said console log hello world so i'm expecting to see you guessed it hello world so you can run the commands that you want and what's so amazing about this this is a great contribution to do to other open source projects because so many projects have build commands link commands test commands deploy commands but they're not automated. And it's we don't want to remove the conversation about the project. We just want to automate as much as possible so we can have more creative, more fun, more challenging conversations and collaborations. So if you see a project that's got a build step, and most will have that. If you're using React, it's got a build step. If you're using Next.js or Angular, they've all got build step. Automate that. Make sure the project builds. If you're using a TypeScript project, it's going to have a build step. Make sure it's running every time something is pushed to GitHub in the main branch or in the pull request in the fork because they can get feedback immediately. Has it worked? Is everything okay? You're testing it on an independent system. So if you're still trying to get contributions for open source, you might still be in Hattoberfest, then keep looking how you can automate people's projects. And you can see it's pretty straightforward. We did that in a few minutes and we could add more to that GitHub action as well. Let me know in the comments below what you've automated or what you would like to automate. But don't forget to give this video a thumbs up while you're down there and come join us in Discord so we can chat between videos and live streams. Link in description below.